Um, but I guess if we're talking, like if we're shifting topics a little bit, like yeah, how much are we expecting next gen? To okay, cost? yeah, let's how talk about it. Some like some like the PS5. How much would if you're gonna get a PS5 and you're yeah. your general consumer? Uh, what's the what's the price where you're like that's that's too much? Well, what we know for sure about pricing for next gen is games are gonna be around the seventy dollar mark, right? So I think that mm -hmm. gives you, uh, gamers kind of an indication that next gen is gonna be expensive. <laughs> like, let's be real, it's gonna be a bit pricier than what we would want. And then Canadians are like, wait, games were already seventy dollars. What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> <laughs> It's like, what do you mean? They're always 70. It's like, yeah, they're going to be like freaking 80, um, $85. So yeah. when it comes to price, this is uh, obviously, again, I really advise people to go watch and understand the tech that's going into uh, the PlayStation 5 because it changes my perspective yeah. on what is acceptable for a price point. Um, before knowing that stuff, I uh, just looking at the, the, the specs that I do know and that I can relate to that I'm like, okay, I'm a PC guy. I know this stuff. Um, I... I was ex obviously they're going to sell at a loss. Uh, consoles are lost yep. leads to sell games. Um, uh, I was going to be surprised if it was like so. My my initial guess was around five hundred US dollar. Um, but in all honesty, I after seeing uh, and I do believe the Xbox is going to be probably a hundred to two hundred bucks cheaper, um, especially if PlayStation is going to come out their five uh, PS five is going to come out uh, with their price first. Um, the I expected now the PS five knowing what's in it i i would pay seven to nine hundred in all honesty for oh. that i mean i i, I nine hundred i don't know for the xbox no 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 for the oh. ps5 <laughs> oh okay you're like wait Not, i thought you hate the xbox the, the, after that whole conversation yeah, about xbox yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. i'll pay nine hundred dollars you know, for it, it. brady's um, also the I, kid with the lamborghini i guess yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i it's uh, i the eight to nine though is where i'm starting the like being like okay Okay. Maybe, um, uh, but seven. I would gladly pay seven, knowing what it is, because I want I want to support this generation of PlayStation, because if it succeeds, that tech again is hopefully going to make its way to the PC market as well. And I'm a PC gamer, so I want that to succeed, so that the PC market can advance as well. I really think that the PCs, uh, the PCs, uh, the PC market is actually going to be um, uh, holding back. The consoles for once i really think it's going to be a, a reverse for a while because right now optimizing games for pcs and how many different components are out there is so hard as a developer developers are just going to jump to the playstation and be like mm -hmm. bro this is easy yeah. i can make games so easy especially with the unreal engine 5 like it's going to be so easy to make games on the playstation yeah. why mm -hmm. not um so you're gonna see a lot of good games come up for it therefore more people buy it therefore the market's going to be there um and uh i hope eventually uh sony could just say hey you know what here's your mouse and keyboard hook it up we're gonna give you a great windows like interface now this playstation 5 is your pc yeah uh, that yeah. would be that I think would be that's a really cool concept um especially if they can kind of integrate some kind of like way better way to put content out from a console directly mm -hmm. i think that that could be pretty huge going into the next generations of consoles since streaming and content creation is becoming like this huge prospect, like everyone wants to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I feel like a lot of people want to do it. Yeah. And so if they can reach those um, like couch couch players and get them to make content, I think it'd be really attractive yeah. for more and more people. But also it's, yeah. it's, you know, you say couch players, rightfully so, like a lot of console players, they like to play on their couch. However, now with the popularity of streaming, a lot of them are connecting their consoles to a computer so they could stream off them as well, right? Uh, because there's yeah. a lot of people that are, are making content on Twitch. So um, going into that market where you're kind of creating technology that could also be used on PC, it makes sense for where gamers are right now. I just want to mention, like, the PlayStation 4 launched in 2014 for 399 okay? Yep. That's 2014. Mm -hmm. And I think it was Brody that said PlayStation 4 was kind of like a mid-console for Sony, right? Like, it was just was kind of like they had to put it... Huh? Was it 2013 or 2014? 2014. First launch in 2014. Was it? I think so. That's what it said. I'm lost. That's what, yeah. Okay. 2014. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> right? PlayStation came out 2014. 2013. Yeah. I'm 2013. Right. No, 2013 in Japan, but it released in North America 2014. No? Did it? I'm, I just searched up PlayStation. No, because it, it was, it was. Time isn't real. Sense. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, North American <laughs> release. Yes, yes, yes. 2013 at 399. Sorry, my bad. You're right. I win. You win. So- Caboose, you win that one. <laughs> but so like that's a lot of time, right? So you have seven years where technology is evolved. You have things are costing more, right? So for me, I feel like six six hundred to six ninety nine for what they're putting into the PlayStation Five makes sense. And I, I don't yeah. think that's too outlandish. I could see something like the Xbox coming in, you know, yeah, a hundred a hundred, a hundred fifty dollars less. But mm-hmm. I still don't think that's a drastic difference to uh, get people to want to pick up the Xbox. So two two things. One, I'm gonna uh, as, unless I uh, a bot bans me here. I'm gonna link um, the video that I think just will change a lot of people's perspectives. All right, I'm good. I'm safe. Um, All right. It's thirty. It's like thirty five minutes, but it's worth the watch. Uh, this guy breaks down. He does three parts, but he breaks down what's going into this next and next gen. And it, 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 it got blocked. Your link got blocked. Oh, it did get blocked. Oh, oh okay. no! Oh yeah, no! Send me it. I'm I'm a mod. So okay. Well, you you wanna you wanna I'll, help I'll me here? Chat. I'll post the chat for I'll you. Put you at I also want to um, say Nagata Lock says nine hundred dollars. Does Brody have investments in N ninety five mask or something? Or is he getting this kind of money? Just thought I'd add that. You talked about it. I'm the Lamborghini guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, no. It, so I, I do suggest uh, again watching um, watching that just to get perspective. But also I want to put I want to put some more perspective on this as, yeah. uh, as well. Um, I'm gonna go around. How how often, Camille? How often do you buy a new phone? Uh, not often. Like years? maybe like. Honestly, I would be like four years with the same okay. phone. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Alex, same? Same thing, around four or five Aaron? years. Uh, yeah. Like how often do I buy a phone? Yeah, uh, phone. Well, that all depends because I, I usually just try to get free upgrades. <laughs> from my, from my <laughs> provider. Yo, you're being honest. <laughs> and and on on average, your the phones you buy probably – 700 1200 now phones yeah. are getting expensive right yeah true but you're buying those way more than you're buying a console why why are we so upset with a thing that's going to last us eight years costing a thousand dollars yeah right i, I think it's just because of the way that the trend the, uh, it's just the way that the trend has been set right it's just the way that like we've seen consoles or, or the way that we've experienced these console price reveals in the past especially you know you look at the xbox one and the playstation 4 and how they were priced at like four or five hundred so it's like people just have like an expectation set in their mind whereas with phones everyone's like oh yeah the next one's a thousand dollars what is that is that a problem mm-hmm. like I, I knew that was gonna happen you know because that's just how it's been but mm-hmm. you're right you are right it's just i think it's just the way that the expectation has been set but so, as well for my phone like- i'm not paying eighty dollars for an accessory on my phone every month True. Right? Like, yeah. I'm not, you're, you're I'm paying, not buying. Here you are, your, your phone plan. Yeah, that's my phone plan, but that's something that's else. I, if my PlayStation 5 <laughs> can make calls and if it could fit in my pocket, yeah, that's exactly. a completely different device. I'm not buying an $80 game for my phone every month, right? So it, I think it is a bit different, but I understand what you're saying. Um, like, I don't think people should be set on like you know it coming out at 399 again you know it's not it it's not gonna happen right not gonna that's happen. not how the world yeah. work it doesn't happen like that and you're not gonna get it for 499 let's be real it's not gonna happen so people need to stop being upset like brody said but also i think playstation playstation does have to make it reasonable mm-hmm. especially because we know that there's not gonna be a lot of consoles coming out at launch so do you think that we'll see a a price shift when they start producing more of these like how will that work right who will get their hands on the playstations first and will they have to pay a premium for that well probably caboose because he's, <laughs> he's been refreshing right his amazon <laughs> page for- constantly uh, <laughs> but no yeah I, and i'm glad you guys brought it up because i was gonna devil's advocate it as myself even uh, <laughs> make, uh, up, your mind, <laughs> make up your mind brody make up your mind that that, that these are devices that you use more often throughout the day right but at the same time i also think uh the point still stands that we do need to shift perspective a bit on the pricing of these things i mean these are high powered machines especially again uh uh watch that link with what's the r d that's going into something like the playstation 5 you have to expect a, a higher price expecting it to still be 399 499 i think is absurd because in, in all honesty i think I that the the price that's probably like a quarter of what they should be selling it to break even Mm -hmm. um so i i think having your yourself anchored that low 
is a problem and you're right is just a part of the market what we expect over the last couple of generations um you know that it's like companies were fighting to be the lowest one because they wanted to sell it but i think at this point um i think sony's in such a good spot yeah um that they really don't have to and that we should expect a higher price because people are going to be more lenient to that price just because th they're already invested in the, that ecosystem i mean you they won this last console war they they won the last generation they have a lot of people invested into um their their network um the people if their friends are there already they're going to want to stay there so um, I think they're they're going to be able to get away with a bit of a higher price. Again, I, I think you brought up some good price estimates that, like, to me, would be reasonable for the company and as a consumer. Uh, Aaron, I think you said something like six nine nine five nine nine, yeah, uh, respectively for the disc drive and not disc drive. So I think right, I, I'd be I, I'd be comfortable as that as a consumer. I also said I anchored myself a bit higher, um, and I think that's fair, especially given that I still think that's like maybe half of what the console cost to produce yeah you said yeah. like 1500 didn't you that yeah you look at look at what's in it i mean the the even the, the xbox too like not given even the r d that went into these the the god just what's in these what, systems what is r d <laughs> uh, research, sorry, research and development um, oh, okay okay <laughs> how much money they have to spend because sony's also pushing a lot of um 3d audio um yeah. as well it's not even just like their their um architecture of their flash controller it's there's a lot of other stuff they're putting into too so that takes a lot of money a lot of time you know mark cerny was flying around the world talking to developers and and engineers to try to figure this stuff out that costs money um but just just from the hardware alone the xbox and playstation 5 would be like um you know mid mid to high well right they're going to be like high range not top tier range pcs but they are mid high uh pcs like they are good systems they are very powerful systems um, um it's that interesting special tech aside. yeah it's interesting that you mentioned that um timbit says that these machines are close to high-end computers be prepared to pay the premium on that um exactly nagata says i can't fathom sony pulling in the kind of volume that they're looking for at a 700 hundred dollar plus price point and I think that has to do with the shift of what gamers can expect. If we see mm -hmm. Xbox come out like just a couple hundred dollars lower than what PlayStation is going to be pricing their console at, I don't think it's far off to for PlayStation to expect the volume because I think people would be willing to invest a couple hundred more uh, dollars to get those first party titles, right? Um, mm -hmm. But if it is a drastic price difference... Now, that could definitely affect uh, PlayStation and what they expect to sell. And depending on how play how many uh, PlayStation consoles will be out there, it may give uh, Sony the um, the time to start bundling the console. If they're seeing that they're, they weren't getting that many pre-orders that they anticipated for the console, and now they have to produce more because, you know, COVID's kind of laying low, if that's the case, um, in fall or Christmas time, right? They may have a chance to bundle it to make it worth the price put that price point that they're putting it at, make it more appealing to gamers. Yeah, I think I think it's uh, Cameron also brought up a good point. Is just like at the end of the day, and this is why I understand that it and Sony understands they're going to have to go lower. And I'm, I guarantee you, they've been putting out a lot of um, just stealth polls and stuff. Um, you know, uh, asking people, you ever get those phone calls that want you know your demographic, your age, and how much you pay for your yeah. hydro bill and stuff. Um, I guarantee you're doing that to try to figure out their market, what people are willing to pay, how much money people make, what they can afford. Um, and most people won't go watch those videos that I've been pushing on you guys. Most people aren't going to really understand what's going into these consoles. Um, and they're going to be like, why would I pay? I just want good games. If there's games, then, then get me on there. But I think ultimately... Um, the tech they have in there is going to draw a lot of developers in. So um, they're going to be able to sell a lot of games. So I think they're going to be able to sell this console for lower than what they should be, but something that is affordable and something that people can uh, get their hands on and aren't being like, well, now I'm living on the street because I have a PS5. <laughs> <laughs> but at least you have a PS5 and no games. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not gonna lie. I'm more interested to see uh, what they do with their with uh, VR. Um, yes. I'm actually really yeah. surprised they haven't said anything else because I know they're working on uh, a lot of eye tracking stuff too with their with their VR, which is going to be really exciting. So I, I'm honestly just waiting for their VR stuff. 
Um, I'm going to buy one anyways, but that'll for sure be like a worth buy if they do some cool tech with that. I'm still just not at all invested in VR. Oh, bro, you need to be on it, man. It's so. Brody's have gonna try pushing you the VR Saber. drug right now. <laughs> have, you VR? have you tried VR yet? Yes, I've played a lot of VR games. Okay. I've and and like I I remember I even did like a whole crazy experience for Batman Arkham VR like a long time ago, and it's mm-hmm. cool. It is, it's one of those things for sure where it's like you can't show somebody a trailer for a VR game and be like, doesn't that look awesome? You yeah. have to play you it. Have to you have to play it. it. Yeah. That's the only way you can be sold on VR. But in my experience playing it, I think it's it's cool. I, I do want to try Half-Life Alex because do it, it does. Me too. I, I heard it's like that? crazy. Yeah. I've, um, been, I've been playing it and I was, so I'm not a Half-Life guy. I actually oh, have okay. been playing through Half-Life uh, 2 and I, I don't, I, I haven't finished it. I actually don't want to play it again because, like, it is, it is not good. I think a what? lot. Of, yeah. I think a lot of people have Damn. huge tinted nostalgia glasses on. Damn. Like well, and it I, is, it is like I get why people liked it at the time, but it does not age well. Um, it is not it good. Doesn't. Yeah, no. Um, there are some terrible mechanics. And considering it came out after Halo CE, and Halo CE had so many better mechanics yeah. and story to it i just i don't get the excuse for you don't for like Africa. the story wow. um, I, well the story doesn't start until eight hours in um, <laughs> wow. so, um but it, it uh, no i just i think it's like i get it, I get it. <laughs> this I is get why it. you're on the show <laughs> um, yeah but but here's the thing though is i am loving half-life alex oh my god it is exactly what we needed in a vr game the worlds feel alive they feel I will give the Half-Life games that they do really good world building. Um, but the it just you feel even just the simple fact of being able to knock a can over lets you feel immersed and into that yeah. world. And uh, so Half-Life, I, I would say Half-Life Alex is exactly what we need from VR games going forward, and you absolutely should play it. And I play yeah, a little bit that, of Beat Saber. Oh yeah, Beat Saber. <laughs> that looks fun. <laughs> Beat Saber is fire though. Saber yeah, fire. when I play it, sometimes I I can't help but like wince whenever like a like something comes at me. <laughs> it's just like so scary. <laughs> yeah. That is definitely yeah. like the VR novelty. Like I remember when I first did like the crazy, like the experience I did with Arkham VR, I first, like you do this thing where you're playing, you're, you're Batman, right? And you're going into the Batcave. And what happens is you stand on a platform and then it starts lowering you into the Batcave. And I'll never forget, like, I'm not, I'm not on an actual elevator. I'm just, I'm standing <laughs> in a space and this elevator starts moving down, and I and I, like, I look down and I got vertigo. I was like, "Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> I'm actually so high up right now." Uh, so like that's that's for sure the cool thing about VR. But for me, I feel like it's still just it's so far off from where I think like PlayStation or the people who run Oculus or the people who make VR games want it to be. Yeah, uh, and it's just it's something that I don't think will be like a competitor in the gaming market no i I, I think it's for a niche right because people like you mentioned you got vertigo playing when i was playing iron man vr like it was the best experience ever i had so much fun but you get so sick because of the motions that they try to (laughs) implement that iron man is known for like going to the side and then shooting and being able to look everywhere and using both hands to shoot in different directions that you get so sick um if you're doing it so quickly if you're trying to imitate iron man right But the concept is still so cool. And I think what VR needs is they need to see much more consistent, great VR games um, Mm -hmm. like Alex, right? So um, you're able to... Yeah, like, (laughs) right? So you're able to actually create that, like, okay, no, VR, we have really great games. That can be AAA titles. I don't think it will ever be, like, a comparison for, like, regular console gaming or PC gaming. I think it's just a different avenue of how you game, like mobile. Yeah, Yeah, that's exactly it. I I still like to sit down with a control in my hand or KBM. Excuse me. You okay? You okay Uh, there? Puberty? (laughs) Um, uh, or KBM and, uh, and, and play on a screen, right? Yeah. Like, like a one screen, not too right beside my eyes sometimes, but like, I, I do love VR and that world. It's never going to take over. Like it's never going to replace standard one screen gaming. That's, that's yeah. not what it is, but I think it's definitely, um, I think you're right that it is a ways away from being really, really good. Um, but it, it is still something that I think a lot of people should give a chance if they haven't because you're you're right you can't tell until you're in it 
Yeah, you have to but, definitely yeah, but just experience like, it. The point, yeah, the point that I'm trying to make is like, it's still currently in its stage where it is. Like, it's not something I'm willing to spend four to five hundred dollars on. You know, like there just there isn't enough there for me to be like, okay, I'll do this. It's one of those things. It's kind of like what the Wii was when that came out back in the day. It was the console that your friend had. And that you would like go over yeah. and play. The Wii was friend. an amazing console, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the Wii like, U, but the Wii was know, amazing. According to their sales, everyone had one. Yes. Okay. yes. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Uh, it's just the point I'm trying to make is like I, I don't know. I wouldn't buy. I wouldn't buy a PlayStation VR right now for myself. I wouldn't. I wouldn't find there to be enough for me. You know, it would. I would definitely have some. There would be some cool games. You know, yeah. Batman, Iron Man. Those are cool. Getting to play Half Life Alex, although it's not PlayStation VR, like if I were to get like an Oculus, um, but it just wouldn't be enough. It wouldn't yeah. be enough for me to be like, yes, my four hundred dollar purchase was justified. I think I think VR really excels at multiplayer games, being able yeah. to play with other people and see the funny interactions. To me, that that's VR a big chat. <laughs> VR chat and stuff like that. Any any of the other games like Half Life and stuff. Titles? Um, yeah, there 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 actually are some VR leagues um, for uh, for games like Onward and stuff. Um, cool. I think it's just called VR League. Um, is the one, but they run a bunch of different video games. Um, it's interesting because there's a bunch of dudes on stage with like, like this kid <laughs> like laying on the ground and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. It's, it's funny to watch, but it is it is cool. I mean, so like, uh, do you think there could be like a future with um, with esports and VR? Down down the road, maybe, but like again, spectating needs to get a lot better for it. Right now, it's kind of like hard True. to watch someone else and their jerky head movements. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it, it, which Alex actually does a good job of. They do motion smoothing for the second screen for whoever's watching. Yeah, um, which yeah. actually helps uh, a lot. So that's what I'm saying. I play Alex. I, I really think uh, if if you want a game to really convince you on what VR can do, at least with current tech, Alex is is one to to jump into for sure. All right, we'll have to continue checking it out. Uh, just going to go to chat right now. How dare you speak down upon the almighty, Timbit says. And I think that's to uh, Caboose because they're talking about the almighty we, of course. Oh. Uh, I think, come on. We started, we started with come canceling on. me. We're going to end the show with canceling yeah. Eric. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> are, we all, are we all really trying to convince ourselves that that was cool? Are uh, we all? Cool at the time. It, it was yeah. good, it was good step forward. Stealth Gamer says, in any... What? If anyone else has a PSVR, I highly recommend picking up Blood and Truth. Have you played that, Brody? It's one of my favorite VR titles. That's what they said. I have not. I, have not, I, I have do not. know what it is. Yeah, no. um, my, my, my PSVR actually, it's beside me. It broke. Oh, I oh no. Came, I think a cable came, got loose or something. You Are you that kid that just breaks like things? <laughs> Everything just breaks around me, man. Oh my god, no wonder I just start crying whenever I'm around you. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's um, just because... Right. Wait, but no, continue. Go ahead. Let's continue this. I, I, was, I was gonna just be full of myself. That's because I'm so beautiful. Oh my god. Just... Okay, all right. Whatever. But I can even say, I'm looking at myself and I'm not... <laughs> um, Timbit says you should check out Boneworks on Steam if you want to see what VR can do. Boneworks is cool. Um, and yeah, they take advantage Half-Life. of the Valve Index controllers as well. So, Half-Life Alex, I'm pretty sure... They had the don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure the the developers that did um, uh, Boneworks were consulted for Half Life Alex because the physics in Boneworks is is the most realistic physics in almost any video game. But yeah. um, of course, you know Half Life games like their physics, so I'm pretty sure they were consulted on what to do, and that's why the physics are so good in Alex. Um, I've been refreshing my Twitter over and over again, and still no news. Yeah. Of the price point. So it seems like Nothing. as we come to an end, we will not know the price of the PlayStation 5, which is sad. Watch it drop the minute after the stream is I, over. I swear <laughs> if it does. PlayStation is out to get us. Uh, but I feel like our predictions were kind of in the right spot. We'll have to see where they land maybe next week when we come back on Monday again at 3 p.m. Uh, is where you could find us every Monday, 3 p.m. We could talk about it. We could bring, if the price is revealed, then we may have a little bit more to go on. Um, and maybe we all do some homework and watch what Brody was telling us to watch. The road to PlayStation 5. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we could do that. We'll have mm-hmm. to talk about that. But uh, chat, you guys have been awesome uh Jahavi says Skyrim on VR was a bit buggy, but the world was worth exploring. So okay, gotta check that one out too. There's a lot of love for VR in here, so I guess Brody's not completely crazy. 
Not completely. <laughs> Not completely crazy. <laughs> sort of, though. It's sort of. <laughs> but you know what, you guys uh, in chat can continue the conversation on our socials at Squad State, on Twitter, as well as individually. Where can everyone find you guys individually? Who wants to oh, go I'm first? Going, I'll go first. Uh, Caboose, EK, Twitter and Instagram, YouTube.com forward slash Caboose. I'm also streaming on Twitch as well. And uh, I look forward to talking with you guys every week. Every week. And how the Wii isn't as cool as everyone thinks it is. I feel like you're gonna <laughs> like you're I feel like chat's gonna just force you to play more of the Wii so you could appreciate it. They're just gonna like sit you down and be like, You gotta play, you gotta play. <laughs> it's just not gonna happen. <laughs> Brody, where can everyone find you? Uh Leafx everywhere. L I E F X, twitch.tv slash Leafx, twitter.com slash Leafx, Instagram, whatever. Just Leafx. Uh and you'll find my stuff. Okay. All right. And Alex? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm mostly on Twitch, twitch.tv slash radpuppy. And then on socials, I'm at Feels Radman for everything. Feels That's Radman. A great name. That's a, it is a great <laughs> name. Uh, of course, you can find me at This Is Camco everywhere on. I started streaming, guys. Aren't you proud of me? I started streaming more gameplay. So oh, you can find me on Twitch, Twitter, <laughs> um, YouTube, everywhere, our social media at This Is Camco. So we'll have to uh, kind of actually chat. If you have any suggestions for topics, hit us up and let us know what you want to discuss on the next episode of uh, Squadcast. I hope that name sticks. We just came up with it last minute. Let us know if you like the name yes. as well. But we'll be back next Monday at 3 p.m. Thank you so much, chat, for watching. You guys have been awesome. And we will see you soon. Bye, guys. Bye. Peace.